Yes. So, uh, I'm about to get dressed, and um, first I'm going to pack my guns up, and I have a women's range day event that I'm doing, and then I'm going to a cigar event in Gaithersburg, Maryland. It's a lounge I've never been to, so I'm excited. Um, I just cleared out my humidor, so I do need to replenish. But before I even got a chance to finish church online, there was a miscommunication with an officer. And it's crazy because I had a speaking engagement this week. And in that speaking engagement, two, I had two different sessions. And in both sessions, they asked me, what is the hardest part of my job? What is the hardest part of running this company? And I answered them and said, the hardest part of running this company is navigating the male ego, getting men to listen, to me without talking back, being disrespectful, being sneaky behind my back, etc. right? And of course, women do it too, but men has been, for the last four years, men and their ego and the way they speak to women and the way they over-explain, man-explain, and in this instance, tell you how you feel. Bruh, first of all, I'm a cancer. I don't need anybody to tell me how to feel. Or what I feel. Or explain my feelings to me. We're very in tune. We don't need help with that, sir. So, I'm going to throw that. I'm, gonna, I'm going to cross out his name. Because I don't want nobody crying. But I'm going to throw the text messages up on the side of the screen. So, let me scoot over. I'm going to throw the text messages up after in editing. And I'm going to throw these up on the side of the screen. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk you through what happened. Basically... He claims he didn't understand me when I said something, and it basically told him he wasn't needed for the shift. He showed up for the shift anyway, which doesn't really happen to me a lot. I don't think I've ever actually had this happen. Um, I had it happen one time, and it wasn't a miscommunication. It was my fault because I didn't tell her that we had pulled out of that site. I totally forgot she was doing a nighttime shift. She was at it late, and I paid her for her travel, right? Right. She got out of bed or stopped doing what she was doing. She went to the site. She was there, checked in. I was like, oh, my God. So I paid her for her time because there's nothing else for me to do. I can't take back what happened. All I can do is rectify it, and I rectify it the way I choose to rectify it. Now, the rectifying might not be to your satisfaction, but it's definitely going to be to my satisfaction because it's my company. And I'm trying my hardest to take care of you. If there was a mistake on my part, I'm going to do what I can do to take care of you, but what I'm not going to do is let you tell me what to do, let you talk to me crazy, let you do whatever. And the crazy thing is, I'm so used to this behavior that it doesn't really phase me. So in the moment, it wasn't phasing me. I was just like, all right. So he came to post. I had to tell him to leave post because there was already enough officers and he wasn't needed. But instead of just leaving accepting the apology he was only there for like 10 minutes he only lives 10 minutes away from the post and I only know that because he was late to post one time and basically told me it's not that big of a deal because he only leaves he only lives 10 minutes and so blah 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 so I remember that conversation so this wasn't the first time where the way he spoke was a little bit of um I want to say condescending is what I want to say. It was a little condescending, but it had a sprinkle of, I know this sounds condescending, but I'm not going to be condescending. I'm not condescending. I'm being emotionally in touch. I don't know who told him that that was how it works, but it doesn't work. And I get to choose how it works. I get to choose how people speak to me. And that's another thing. For the women who are CEOs, you get to choose how people speak to you. You get to choose how people deal with you. You get to choose how you deal with those people. And for me, it's a quick, you're no longer needed. It's a quick, here's your money back. I don't want you to be a student. It's a quick, here's your money back. I'm canceling the invoice. I don't need you as a client. There's a lot of people in this world. There's a lot of officers. There's a lot of clients. There's a lot of opportunity. You do not have to be disrespected to keep your business running. And you don't have to be disrespectful when you let them go. And see, one thing I've learned is keeping things via email and keeping things via text 
is the smartest thing you can do. Because if you allow someone to call you during a disagreement or you allow someone to call you while they're being upset, they're either going to deny what they say on the phone. They're going to lie about what you say on the phone. They're going to act like they didn't understand. All that stuff is possible. But when it's in writing, in front of witnesses, all kinds of stuff. I've learned that the hard way. So while we were going back and forth with this, he tried to call me. And I said, I'm not, I'm good. I'm watching church. I'm good. I'm in church. I'm not about to call you because I want whatever you got to say to be on writing. So when you try to do whatever it is that you want to do, because I could already tell he was emotional. So whatever, when men are emotional, it's a whole different thing than women emotional. When they feel like they're not getting across, when they feel like they're not getting understood, they try to do the most. I could already tell that he was going to try to do the most. And so I protected myself because I always tell y'all, always protect yourself. So I protected myself by not answering his phone call. I protected myself by keeping things in writing, keeping things in front of the other officer, etc. So it got worse. I, he came, I told him to leave. He was only there for like 10 minutes and he was only there for more than 10 minutes. If so, because he wasn't answering his phone. I had to have another officer tell him. So once he answers me, he tries to answer me out of the group chat of the officers. And I don't allow that either because I already know that if you're trying to take a conversation out of the actual chat, then you about to do the most. So I pull him back in the chat so that there's other people witnessing what's going on and he starts to explain why he was upset, which is understandable. I understood and I agree. I think he should be upset. But being upset at me because you got up and you went to work and you didn't have to work because you misunderstood what I said. It's not fully my problem, responsibility. It's not fully my fault. But I'm going to take responsibility by apologizing. And I also think he misunderstood what I was apologizing for. I wasn't apologizing for the miscommunication. I was apologizing for the actual things he listed, which were getting up. He said, I'm mad because I got up and I went there and I didn't need to be up that early. I'm apologizing for you having to do that because I didn't put you on schedule. I didn't say you got it. I didn't say the shift is yours. I didn't say any of those things. I said, it's filled. It's filled. When you ask for a shift, and you're three hours later than when I asked if you wanted to shift. And I say it's filled. To me, that means it's filled. Why would I be saying to you it's filled if I was talking about you filling it? He said that my incomplete sentences was the why he was confused. No, you wanted to shift and that's why you were confused. But the bottom line is. He starts to tell me how I feel. So I wasn't frustrated until I'm reading these text messages and he's like, you're offended. And I think you think I, and I think you feel, and I think you do, bruh, you doing too much. You already said you mad and what you mad about. I've already apologized. I paid him for his time and I asked him to stop texting. I was like, bro, going back and forth to me is not worth, worth it. Like, you got to stop like this, cut it out. And instead of cutting it out, he had to get the last word. It was like, all right, okay. And I was like, bro, just stop. Texting back is the opposite of stop. And that's probably where I got petty because that's probably me trying to get the last word. So I'm like, just stop. He's like, what's wrong with saying okay? Have a good day in church. Da -da -da -da. Like, just, bro, you, bro, you giving, is giving, is giving estrogen. So then I'm like, bro, listen, I paid you for your time. You are no longer needed. You need to get that ego in check before you continue to work for me. And that right there is what I think people don't understand. You work for me. You're not about to go to the CEO of Walmart and tell them you think that they misunderstood or tell them that you think they, that you offended them and they need to get over it or tell them. Like, you're not talking to these white folks like that. And sorry to my white viewers, but, it, but black men not about to, black men don't go and talk to their white bosses like that. They just don't. They do not go to their white bosses and talk to them. I've worked in the federal. I've worked in the private sector. I've seen people get dogged out by their bosses. And I have never seen them just go and talk any old kind of way to their white male counterparts. N not one time. 
Not even the police. It's so many police officers that stand there and let somebody do something crazy as heck and don't say nothing. The fact that he was comfortable enough, and he's a new officer. The fact that he was comfortable enough to just talk to me any old kind of way shows the disconnect. And that is the most difficult part about being a female owner. It's because that right there is like, what do you do with that? So then he goes on to say things like, I wasn't cussing at you, so I don't understand what the problem is. I don't know where you learn to communicate because I know that I have bad, I, I got a smart mouth. So I purposely wasn't being smart. But just because you're not being smart and not cussing doesn't mean that you're not, not doing too much. Doing too much is trying to tell me how I feel, tell me I'm offended, trying to talk to down on me, trying to talk at me like you know me better than me is bananas. Check this out. Then while we're doing this whole debacle, he goes on social media, and I'm going to put that up there. He goes, while he's talking to me, he makes two stats. Doesn't tag me. Makes two stats, but I'm a private investigator, so it made me look. Because that emotional state, I knew it carried over to social media because there's a type. Two stats about me. No tag, two stats. Wow, he was texting back. Then I said, yes, and I paid you. We're good. It's over. It's done. I do not need you anymore. Thank you. I appreciate you. He started to text back. I blocked him off the chat. He leaves out of that chat, goes to another chat, starts writing because the app tells you that it's writing. And I said, listen, you do not have to switch chats. It is over. We are done here. Let it go. So then he sends a whole longer text message about how, because I'm the owner of the company, I should be able to let people tell them what's wrong. I said, and I did, and I understand. And I did what I needed to do to rectify it, which was apologize for the inconvenience and the confusion, which I did both, and pay you. That should be the end of it. There's nothing else for me to do. I can't take the time back. I can't rewind time. So then he goes, you know, but defending yourself and apologizing doesn't make sense. I don't need to defend myself from you. And that's where the men thing comes in. I don't need to defend myself to an employee, period. That might sound very crass, but it's very serious. Unless I do something that is not morally wrong, illegal, whatever. But if so, I don't need to defend myself, I fix the problem. And this is how I fix the problem. I apologize for the confusion because that's what I'm sorry for. I apologize for the inconvenience because that's what I, I'm sorry for. And then I paid you for your time. That's it, boss. Paid you for your time. Apologize. It's over. You want to have an emotional conversation about it, but that's not who I am. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that my answer didn't. You answered and I didn't. you didn't like my answer is your problem, not mine. There's nothing I can do about you not liking my answer and feeling like I'm defending. You don't have to get defensive. I said, I'm not. I'm just being honest. He said that I need to change the way I talk so that people can understand me better. And I said, well, I've been talking the same way, using the same terminology for 15 years. I guarantee you I am not going to change how I speak just for you, for one person, for one incident. He got completely upset about that and said that I was unwilling to rectify and unwilling to change. And Sir, I don't even know you. Why would I be changing for you? What kind of abusive relationship stuff are you used to? I'm not changing for you. You don't have to be here. And neither do I. So I said, listen, I did what I had to do. And I don't have to talk to you about this. Like, I don't have to deal with your attitude. You telling me you mad. You telling me you frustrated. Like, go talk to your girlfriend. I don't have to. This is not. We're not friends. I don't have to do this with you. You told me what was wrong. I did what I needed to do. It's over. Come into a new chat to try to talk about the chat. Then he was calling me through this whole thing. And I was like, yo, I'm not answering the phone. Because what I'm not going to do is let you say whatever, me say whatever, and then get on. No, I've talked to him on the phone once before because he was late. He called off at 3 a.m., never got a response from me. Then when I answered, it was a lot of like, oh, my car won't start. I'm going to go check it. And then an hour later, I'm like, did you check your card? And he's like, no, I didn't check it. I'm like, but why would you say you about to check it? Again? Oh, I'm not ready to go out yet. Like, sir. So I already knew what type time that was going to be on because a personality is a personality. Now, I'm not everybody's cup of tea, but that's because I'm fucking coffee, bitch. So I know that the way I speak, and the way I handle things is not for everybody. And that's OK. I got over 300 people on my roster. I'm not going to get along with everybody. I'm not. That's just that it, it, you have to understand that no matter how God filled you are, no matter how nice you are, no matter what 
sometimes you're just not going to get along with somebody. And that's okay. And well, ladies, you don't have to please everybody as a boss. You have to be respectful. And I was. I kept saying, I appreciate you. I'm sorry. I said, but you are doing too much. Just because I'm respectful don't mean I'm going to be disrespected. That ain't the same thing. I let them know, like, yo, you're doing too much. I didn't cuss at you. Who said that that means that's what doing too much means? No. Doing too much means doing too much. Man. Then he said, I had no ego while I was talking to you. Once you asked me a question, then right after the question you said, and I don't mean this in an aggressive way. I just need to know. If you you thought that what you said was aggressive, and that's why you responded before I could even respond. So they know what they be doing, and then they try to backpedal. And then when you don't fold, what Beyonce say, I might cook, I am clean, but I'll never fold. Sir, just because you have a problem with something that I said doesn't mean that I have to change who I am for you. I can do what I need to do to rectify the situation to my satisfaction because I know that I can't fully satisfy you. But as a business owner, I gave you money. I gave you a freaking apology. And I said, how about this? Before I even get the schedule for next week, I will put you on schedule. Are you available for Sunday? I will put you on schedule before I even put out the schedule or even get the schedule from the client. I will put you on schedule without even knowing if there's a schedule to put you on. How about that? I forgot that. So I paid you, put you on schedule next time without even having a schedule ready and apologize. And that wasn't enough. And you went to social media. You was texting. I had to block him because he kept writing me. That is the hardest part of my job. The hardest part of my job, the hardest part of my job is navigating my introvertism, <laughs> my bluntism, my cancerism against the male ego. Because I be not caring. I be, I be not caring. Like, I literally will let you know what it is, how it is, and who it is without an issue. But what we not going to do is go back and forth and... You forget that I'm the one that signed a check. You forget that it's my company. You forget that, listen, you don't get to tell me about me. That's, that has nothing to do with the actual problem. You said what you said, and I answered you. I'm not going to change my terminology for one person for one incident. When I've been doing this for four or five years, and I've never had this happen, you're the only one who did it. You're the only one who didn't understand it's filled. That's not my fault, bro. But I took accountability. Tell me something, you can't apologize and defend yourself at the same time. I don't need to defend myself against you. It's crazy. Male ego is co crazy, bro. So that's the kind of stuff I deal with. Like, that's the kind of stuff I deal with on a regular basis. Not particularly that situation, but dealing with not dimming my light, not taking no shit, not being disrespectful to people, but being assertive. And dealing with that male ego is so difficult to navigate because you don't want to be an asshole. But I'm an asshole by trade. Like, that's I was born like that. And so it's just it's just crazy, bro. And it just happened on a day that I was vlogging. So I felt like, you know, it was a good thing to talk about. But ladies, don't dim your life for nothing. And don't let people man explain yourself to you. How are you telling me about my emotions? You see, you offended. So I know I was like, I'm not offended. It's, I'm not even that deeply invested in this. Now I am because you did too much. Oh, and the last thing he was like, do what you got to do. I mean, go ahead and do what you going to do already or something like that. And I was like, yeah, bro, you simmer down, young buck. You, you out of here. So it, it's just it's just like, bro, he won't be the first or the last. I mean, he wasn't the first and won't be the last. So it is what it is with that. But I'm about to head to the range and then I got a cigar event to go to because... The three, four officers that are on site, they're there. They're working. I'm getting paid right now. That's something I did for free because I had time today. Mm -hmm, I had time today. So, I'm going to get dressed. I'm going to pack my guns. I might let y'all see me pack the guns and I'll be back. So, what we're packing here is some demo stuff. This is the Mantis. It's a great way to practice at home. This is a cert pistol, laser. I got just some extra ammo, magazines, my shooting gloves, uh, Glock 22 40 caliber. Then I have some, I know I have ammo at the range, but I brought extra ammo just in case. Um, and then we're going to be taking that, but that has the AR Mantis on it. Um, gives you magazine, gives you that. So I'm going to put this back in 
Um, yeah, so. Those two bolts out and come out on the other side there. Just like that. Just like that. And now take the receiver off. Take the fake bolt out. Good to go. So I made it to the range. So I'm a little overdressed for the range. As you can see but I'm always overdressed for the range but in this particular day I'm a little overdressed for the range because I have an event to go to after this and so I had to dress for my highest point of the day if y'all watch my vlog you've heard me say that before it's something that a millionaire taught me a few years ago so waiting on the ladies well I'm sitting here in the star lounge by myself because the person whose event it is is late and then their guests are late as well so but i'm leaving on time because i have to go to bethesda which is probably about 40 minutes away from me this is the humor door they keep in the lounge no cigars but those and i think like two over here but so i gotta leave on time and i'm always late so if i'm on time you know it's serious business so i i gotta leave on time I can't be late leaving because they were late coming, so. So that's pretty cool as well. Um, I like going to new lounges and I don't really have a lot of cigars. I put about 250 cigars in my humidor like last year. And I would like to say that I just threw maybe 10 away because I felt like they were like not good quality anymore. Um, but I do believe that they were the damaged cigars that I bought. So I bought them damaged on purpose. And I think now they just, they're just not, they wasn't, they wasn't given what they were supposed to be given. So I just threw like 10 cigars away, honestly. So now my humidor needs to be um, restocked. And so I will start that process. When I restock my humidor, I like to get them from different places. So being though I'm going to this place today, I'm going to grab maybe five. And then I'll I already have my subscriptions that come so then I'll grab of course my subscriptions but then I'll have um, maybe order a few more um, sorry these people act like they don't know how to drive but um, I'll grab a few more from maybe some online sites or whatever and you know I'll restock my stuff so 
that's how that humidor stuff goes. So I'm about to pick up my friend and then we're gonna head down there. And so I'll film what I can because it's an invite only private event. So I'll film what I can. Um, you already know how that goes. Um, so I'll probably film the outside of the lounge just so you can see the lounge we're at or whatever. And then, yeah. Um, the event was great. I just gotta find a different way. Maybe bringing in a partner to do the range. Because trying to do six people, just me, two at a time, you know, whatever, whatever. But this wasn't really one of those long, drawn out, um, we're going to train kind of events. This was just a uh, introduction into firearms. Um, we drank a little, we smoked a little, we ate. Um, but we were still shooting when the food came. So some, might, some people's food was a little cold. So I just want to mitigate that the next time I do that. Um, like sticking to the schedule. But the problem was that they were like 20 minutes late. And once they came 20 minutes late, everything got late. So, you know, I just want to be able to mitigate that, cut that up, and do well with the timing on these private events because they are a lot mashed into they're a lot mashed into one little secular space so but i'm almost here so i'm about to get off i will see y'all after